Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the nutrients that make your muscles grow, okay? We're also going to be talking about other things that will slow down the breakdown of muscle. So let's say you're going into menopause, you're getting older, and your muscles are getting weaker, and you're having lo loss of collagen underneath your arm. This video is for you, or you just want to build up more muscle. Um, the myth is that you need just more protein to build muscle. Okay, so check this out. You eat protein, which is basically animal muscle. You might have eggs, you might have fish. It's the muscle of that animal. And you digest it, and your liver and your stomach and your intestines and enzymes start breaking down into these small particles or building blocks called amino acids. Okay, amino acids are the foundational building blocks of protein. So it takes certain acids, it takes certain enzymes to break it down. All right? and they're in your stomach, it's in the pancreas, it's in the liver, it's in the small intestine, so you have these enzymes. Um, so this whole conversion of breaking down the protein and then building it back up require these nutrients, okay? Vitamins and minerals and other things. So in other words, the purpose of vitamins and minerals are, are basically coenzymes or cofactors to help convert the raw material, amino acids, into body tissue, or other, like fatty acids, into healthy tissue. So we need the vitamins for that. And we also need these vitamins and minerals to support the enzymes, which are the magical workers that pull this off. And it's quite magical. So we don't need more protein necessarily, we need more of the nutrients. The two top nutrients that are mostly missing would be potassium, and trace minerals. Potassium, because we need so much, we need 4,700 milligrams a day, and there's not a lot of people that are consuming seven to 10 cups of vegetables per day. So they're not gonna get their potassium. And trace minerals, because it's missing in our soils. So if you don't have the trace minerals, it's hard to activate the enzymes, right? There's other vitamins that you need too, like the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and K, but specifically vitamin A. And, but most people get those. And you need certain B vitamins, which most people can get easily, and vitamin C. These are all necessary in the conversion into actual muscle tissue, okay? And of course, if you exercise, you're gonna break down tissue and you start building back up, and that's a necessary thing. But I wanna go through some common issues that people have that are, might not necessarily relate to nutrition in general, it relates to amount of sugar and refined carbs. So in the other videos I talked about insulin resistance, okay? And that's a condition where your cells uh, no longer allow insulin into the cell as much as it should, so it's kind of blocked. And that's simply because there's too much sugar in the diet, so the body shuts it down because it's toxic, so it doesn't allow the cell to actually um, allow the, the sugar to go in the cell anymore. But because insulin is also involved in the absorption of um, protein and amino acids, you have this dual effect of now you can't get fuel, but you also can't get amino acids in the cell. So that's why diabetics, for example, have a lot of weakness in the muscle, loss of collagen, loss of muscle strength. And here's the animation how it works. You have the normal protein going in the cell with the help of insulin, like a key. And then over here you have insulin resistance where the cell is blocked. Insulin can't enter anymore and thus you have less protein in the cell. Thus, you have less muscle protein, collagen, joint tissue, you name it, okay? So insulin resistance is one thing, and then you also have stress in general. Those people that are adrenal body type, they're stressed out. What happens, they're activating a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is very, um, it's called catabolic. It's very destructive on the muscles, okay? Catabolic means breaking down. Anabolic means building back up. So when you have the muscle breaking down its particles in this animation, you can see these muscle uh, particles are breaking down because of the high levels of cortisol. It basically then converts to sugar, okay? So protein is being converted to sugar. If you want to know the name of that, it's called glyconeogenesis. Sh glyco meaning sugar, neo meaning new, genesis meaning the generation of, the formation of. Formation of new sugar from muscle. Eventually they get diabetes because the blood sugars go up because the muscle protein is turning into sugar. Primarily uh, taken from your quadriceps and your thigh and the gluteus maximus, that's your butt muscle. So you see uh, these cases with the adrenal over time, they have no butt and they have no legs. It's all gut in the middle part, right? Like a, like a little, tr like a trunk and these stick legs. That's the adrenal. 
and that's what's happening with muscle. So you can have excessive stress causing a loss of protein, you can have lack of nutrients, you can have high levels of insulin because the insulin's not working, insulin resistance, prediabetes, causing a lack of absorbable protein. Okay, so here are the do's. You wanna do intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting triggers growth hormone. Growth hormone increases muscle uh, preservation and retention of muscle and muscle building. Okay, so you need three meals, maybe two meals a day. Okay, I have tons of videos on that, you can watch that. This whole four, five, or six small meals a day, not good. It spikes insulin, it keeps your protein from going in. Um, now, let's talk about snacks. Adding snacks spikes insulin, again, causes more protein problems. You would think that having protein snacks between the meals is gonna help your muscles, no. Um, so you don't wanna do any snacks because you wanna do intermittent fasting because that way you can heal insulin resistance, okay? Now, that's why the pre and post meals or even protein meals is a bad idea. Gatorade filled with sugar, not good because the sugar is what we're trying to counteract because it's creating the insulin resistance messing with your muscles, okay? Now, as far as uh, a lot of people, this is a mistake they make, they have protein powder, so uh, whey protein powder, thinking they're gonna drive all this protein into the muscle, uh, but that's gonna spike insulin. You'd be better off having a fattier protein. The, the more fat, the less insulin spike, the better, okay? Moderate amount of protein, okay? Three to six ounces. Don't go with like massive amounts of protein like I see people just eating so much protein thinking that's helping them when it's just overloading the liver. Your body can't handle that much protein. It just puts stress in the liver. If you're 18 years old, you can pretty much handle it, but eventually it starts slowing down. I don't even think at 18 you could probably handle too much. Uh, then we have the type of exercise. If you ever see a long distance runner, they don't look very muscular, do they? They, they kind of have smaller muscles, uh, probably because of the carbo loading or, or just the glucose they consume. If you take marathon runners, uh, they have this thing called goo, which is just pure sugar, and they're taking this sugar, they're running out, they're doing a lot of carbs. Uh, unfortunately, that's gonna create more insulin resistance and block the muscle. Not to mention, the sustained exercise increases cortisol and it causes muscle wasting. A much better exercise would be high intensity interval training, because that can spike growth hormone and preserve your muscles as well. Short burst of high intensity exercise full body, very important. Sleep is also necessary to increase growth hormone. Um, stress is not good, so these are the things you don't wanna do, these are the things you want to do. Okay, so I hope this summary helped, and go ahead and apply it and give me your comments. Hey, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you personally. There's so many of you that have gotten this book, and the feedback that you're giving me is mind-blowing. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And if you wouldn't mind, I have one quick favor, to put your unbiased review on Amazon, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much.